Hello, Helena. It's Emily McVeigh, Executive Director of the United Way, and we're here for this week's United Way Partner Spotlight with United Way. <laughs> we're our own partners today. We are partners. No. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about some of our community impact work that we do and some of our community projects. So this week, coming up in a couple of days, we have Spirit of Service. Yes, Spirit yes. of Service. And that's a project we took over from Rocky Mountain Development Council last year. They ran that program for about 20 years, doing a lot of really good work in our community, and they, they said it was time for us to take that over. And they did. <laughs> you know, they did that for so many years, and boy, it grew. It got really big for Rocky. And, uh, and then COVID hit, mm -hmm. and that put the brakes on for a couple years. So after COVID, uh, Rocky approached us and said, how would you like to do this? And we said, sure, sure, we can do that. Uh, that was in our wheelhouse. And, uh, but we are uh, purposely trying to keep it relatively small. Uh, smaller this year, than Rocky's. Yes, yeah. smaller <laughs> than it has been, yes, yes. Uh, it's still a significant project. We started out with 12 homes this year, and uh, the good folks, uh, our junior high students at Helena Middle School uh, approached us and said they'd like to do some projects. So we added three more homes for them. So we'll do a total of 15 homes on Friday. And uh, we're spending the week getting all the supplies in hand, uh, getting all the materials together, and uh, dumpsters in place, all that kind of good stuff. So, uh, and I have to say, as I have met uh, many of our uh, clients, folks who will be uh, serving their homes, it's, uh, it's a remarkable group of people, senior adults, um, folks uh, with disabilities, folks who frankly would like to get out and do this yard work themselves, but just don't have the capacity any longer. So, um, and the selection process is hard. It's, you know, everybody needs a little help, uh, but we've, we've selected, uh, 15 homes that uh, will be spruced up on Friday and uh, look a little better uh, thanks to a lot of uh, partners in the community. Yeah, we have about, what, 130 volunteers showing up Friday to yeah, do if that you work? Count, yeah, if we count ourselves, we've got about 120, 130 volunteers uh, that will be out at these various sites. Yeah, that's true. I, I haven't been counting the middle school folks because they're going um, to gonna pack their, well, they're going to take lunch from school. Sure. So uh, we don't have to provide lunch for them. And they're also, I think, walking to their sites. Uh, yeah, so we've tried to select sites relatively close to the school, mm -hmm. but I think one's about a mile away. So besides a little yard work, they can also get a hike in. It's a good so, field trip for seventh abs graders. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. And they're making their own shirts. So they did. They're they getting did. art class. They're getting yes. gym class. That's they're right. getting carpentry class. That's right. We got them, <laughs> we got them the traditional yellow shirts, but uh, they decorated themselves. In fact, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing how the shirts turned out. Yeah. So, yeah. This is a great so project. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. Yeah. It's a great collaboration with them. It is. It is. And I, I have to say... Uh, Around the community are hardware stores and uh, some of the work teams. Um, I'll try to name a few. I'm not going to remember them all, but uh, folks at Convergent are, have put together a team. Uh, folks at Century 21 put together a team. Uh, Intrepid Credit Union and uh, uh, Lewis and Clark uh, County uh, employees have grouped together. They're doing a project. Um, Let's see, Lewis and Clark County Democrats. Uh, who else? Federal uh, Reserve. Federal Reserve, yes, Federal Reserve. Um, a, good, a good group of partners. And a couple of, oh, Marsh McLennan uh, Agency uh, put together a group uh, at the last minute. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Yeah, it's starting to build back up post-COVID. And yes. uh, people are remembering what that program was like and take the day off, do some good volunteer work and help out some people. I know we had, what, 31, 32 applications. So we're about halfway. We're about able to about help about half the number of people that applied. Um, and then we saved those applications that we weren't able to help next year, and we sort of put them on a priority list for the following year. So we try to make sure we're looking at those folks next year when those applications come in. But 
I think we doubled the number of applications this year. So we can oh, see that project growing. Yeah. Yep. yep, we can see it growing already. Well, and I can see how, as Rocky described, it could grow over the years. But um, I feel maybe it's our capacity uh, because, frankly, it was taking them, I think they told us, three to six months to prepare for the project. And, uh, you know, we have some other projects going on at the United <laughs> Way. And so uh, I think we're going to try to keep it to between 12 and 15 projects per year. That's a, that's a nice size. Um, you know, when you think about delivering lunches, providing the supplies. And, uh, and we, do have, we do have some sponsors this year. Uh, we'll look, be looking for more sponsors next year. And as I have talked with our um, hardware stores, folks like Lowe's, Home Depot, Power Townsend, and Ace Hardware, uh, Rock Hand, um, I, I promised them we would uh, start talking to them a little bit sooner next year and see if uh, maybe we can get uh, greater sponsorship from them and greater buy-in because I think all of those folks want to, uh, and, and they do, they contribute to the community. Uh, one of the things that I acknowledge with the, many of our businesses uh, and especially our hardware stores, they just get hit up by folks building uh, floats for the vigilante parade, or they get hit up by a lot of different folks. And so uh, they want to be generous, they want to be community partners, but often uh, the response is if you talk to them in May, they'll say, I'm sorry, our May contributions have already been given out. So, so we'll, we'll plan ahead a little better next year and get them on board. Uh, can so. you share with us uh, some of our other sponsors uh, on the project? Yes. Um, so we're excited to be partnering with a strong list of uh, around eight sponsors this year. The, some big ones include Safeway and Tri-County Disposal, who without their assistance, the project would be far less successful than it's going to be. Um, Safeway is very generously provided um, at no cost to us, uh, the lunches for all of these volunteers. That's an incredible that's donation. Yep. Yep. And also Tri-County Disposal is providing all of the dumpsters and the trash cans uh, for making this event truly successful because without that, there would be no successful project for SOS. Um, it's cutting down trees creates a lot of garbage. Cutting down <laughs> trees and getting rid of decks and cleaning up trash and yard waste and mm. the list goes on and on. So yeah, two incredible partners for us. We also want to thank the Hilton for their strong continued support of everything that we do as well as thank Big Sky Printwear for making all of our yellow shirts and helping us out with that. They gave us an awesome discount. And uh, who else do we have on the list? We've Sherwin Williams. Sherwin Williams. Yeah. What would we do without Sherwin Williams? They are providing us the paint that we need for a lot of these projects, as well as the painting supplies. Um, and they're providing a team. They're gonna, and they're, they're providing gonna a team, place. exactly. Yeah. And yeah. another donor who's doing an incredible job for us is American Kemet. They're providing, not only were, did they come in as a financial sponsor, but they also came in with doing three East Helena houses. So that that's incredible. Yeah, they're great. And Randy's Painting, they're always an ongoing yes. sponsor and they're gonna help come guide people on how to how to paint things appropriately yes. not because i i know i waste paint a lot <laughs> so how do you not waste the paint get it right you know prep it correctly all those kinds of things so do yeah. a little guidance a little training before people get started and, it's definitely yeah. a skill set not everyone has <laughs> i'm better at delivering the lunches <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> i'm good at telling people what to do <laughs> not always building the things so yeah so hopefully uh, the weather holds out and we we get yep. this thing all wrapped up on Friday and 15 happy homeowners that's right that's right no snow no snow oh. yeah. <laughs> I think we're done with no snow, snow maybe yep. you never know but yeah so yeah it'll be a great project we'll uh, we'll shoot some video and we'll report that out and then we'll uh, and then plan on it all over again next year that's right 
That's right. So, and we do want to thank everyone who has contributed to this project, including the volunteers, the financial sponsors, the financial sponsors who are also doing volunteer work for us. Um, and you can see a whole list of all of the donors who have been so generous with this project on our Facebook page. And we are so grateful to all of them. Yes. So on a different note, thing, another thing that's taking up a little bit of our time at our office, um, we are working on purchasing the Helena Inn to create permanent supportive housing in our community. Just a small uh, project with a, little, a small budget. A little bit of something to do. Um, so we jumped into that about two months ago, um, and that has been, was a, a big decision to make without a lot of pre-planning. So we've been <laughs> sort of backwards planning um, getting this project underway. Luckily, we have a lot of really great support from the community, not only in Helena, but around the state um, and outside of the state from people that do this kind of work and um, people that do this kind of work in our community, uh, you know, in other capacities as well. So. Uh, thankfully, we're building up a really great team to help us make this happen, but um, tell us a little bit about why we so badly need this project to happen. Well, because we uh, have a weekly meeting uh, where we discuss with our professionals in the field, uh, mental health professionals, Good Samaritan, uh, God's Love, all the folks who are uh, dealing with our uh, unsheltered neighbors on a weekly basis, we, we are very aware of the need in our community for um, affordable housing. And uh, it, it wasn't like we didn't plan to do this. Let's just say the opportunity presented itself. A little faster it, than we yeah, planned. <laughs> a, little, a little quicker. Uh, we have been, uh, for the last five years, we've been looking for places to house folks affordably and uh, and and the great thing about this project is it's called permanent supportive housing and it's called that because folks could live there indefinitely it's not transitional they're not just coming through here looking for a better place some may do that but uh, they could be their permanent home and the supportive piece means that at the facility or uh, at their locations, uh, they will have services provided such as uh, mental health services, addiction services, um, housing navigation. If they do want to find an apartment someday, excuse me, <clears throat> if they do want to find an apartment someday, we can help them uh, move down that path. Uh, we have folks who are veterans who need housing. I know the Veterans Administration has already reached out to us, and uh, so we'll have housing for that situation. And uh, it, it's just a great opportunity with 48 rooms right now, and we will do some remodeling in the process. That's hence the fundraiser and purchasing the uh, facility. But uh, uh, with a small apartment, uh, kitchenette included, uh, we will be able to uh, provide uh, permanent supportive housing for up to 48 people, possibly some couples. Couple rooms are big enough for maybe a small family. Uh, so uh, the need is significant and we've already experienced uh, the affirmation from the community that this is a need that the community understands and wants to support. And speaking of supporting that project, I'm going to let Clarity talk a little bit about how people can support uh, our little journey here of purchasing that property and getting it up and running just as soon as possible. Yeah, um, but before I get into that, I also want to give a shout out to Convergent for being a sponsor for us for SOS as well. Oh, so yes, yes. Convergent, yes. They are an amazing group and financial supporter and also doing a house themselves. Um, so as far as being able to support this project and help us make this dream and this huge community asset happen in real life, um, there's several ways that you can participate. Um, you can sign up to become a monthly donor. 
Um, and you can also decide that if you want your monthly donation to go specifically towards the Housing First Capital campaign, that would make sure that that hotel or that project rather has ongoing support both now and into the future. We will name the project one day. <laughs> we yes. will name the project, yes. The site, yes. Yeah. <laughs> We're open to suggestions, so if you have them, send them our way as long as they're appropriate. <laughs> um, also, we are approaching major donors. We are reaching out to high profile people who have, you know, whose interests align with this project who have connections to Montana. Um, we're reaching out to you know, donors who are known within the community to be very community-minded um, and to give generously as well. And we are grateful for their uh, participation and super grateful for our major donor who contributed $500,000 to this project to help it get off the ground. Um, we're also looking at future fundraising efforts, so we're applying for various different grants. Um, and we, you know, fingers crossed, expect to be doing a raffle here shortly. So we're hoping that that will help out. Um, we're going to do a 50-50 raffle. So, you know, as we grow, we're also going to make someone's day as well. So um, great opportunity for, you know, doing good and potentially making some money yourself. You mentioned the grants. Um, as we know, this, this challenge, this situation is nationwide. It's yes. not just here in Helena. And as a result, there are, the federal government has grants available. Um, state government has grants available. We are finding a lot of grants out there. Now, it takes a minute or two to apply for a grant. And so right. we are, uh, and, and thankfully we've had one grant writer step forward and help us out. Thank you uh, to uh, Lisa, Bay. Lisa, Bay. Lisa Bay. Thank you. What would yeah. we do just, without just her? Just <laughs> Huge uh, yeah. asset, yep. like yep. total five stars, kudos, serious pat on the back. We, she has been so incredibly helpful and insanely generous with her time and her skill set in helping us do the grants mm -hmm. because we are a small staff of four. And our development department consists of one person. So being able to bring some <laughs> volunteers into that project is incredibly helpful because it's a big project that requires a lot of fundraising. Sure. Uh, so, so you can donate. You can donate time. If there are other folks who with a little time on their hand that would like to help us uh, search for grants, write grants, uh, help double us. check our grants. Absolutely. Um, that kind of help would yeah. be so, so useful. Yeah, we're, we're definitely looking. We have a volunteer fundraising um, team that I'm working on building. And so if fundraising and, um, you know, marketing and talking to people is something you really enjoy and you're looking for a project or a way to volunteer your time to give you, your life some more meaning and purpose or if you're just bored and you want to help out, um, Definitely, please consider you know approaching us to be on our volunteer fundraising team because we are looking to build a really strong army to help us with this and future projects. And if you're not interested in fundraising and you're a policy dork like me, yes. you true. can be on that team because yes. the next true. phase of what we're doing is building the policies around the project. And luckily, we don't have to start from scratch. We right. have programs around the state in Missoula, Bozeman, and Ronan, the Corporation for Supportive Housing out of Denver has helped them build the, those programs, and they will share all that with us. But what we need to do is bring all of that together and make it work for Helena, right. make it work for right. us. Um, what services do we have? What do we not have? What, you know, kind of bringing all those pieces together um, and making a, a policy program that works for us and uh, the clients that will live here. and and all of those kinds of things. So lots of pieces and lots of ways people can help out. No yeah. shortage of work to be done. Right, and, so. and one day soon we'll be hiring some folks to help uh, run yep. that program. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so uh, we'll talk about that at a later date. Yep. I'm yep. pretty sure every single one of us could use a volunteer. So you know, <laughs> if you're a Carroll College student or a Helena College student, um, and you're looking for an unpaid internship, we are totally open to creating one just for you. Yeah, and one of the, I think one of the exciting pieces about the permanent supportive housing that we've already started to receive grants for, because it's an easy uh, sell, I think, that people can understand is the independent living training program. 
And a lot of our clients that we work with now have, have actively asked us for that. They know that they aren't ready to live housed or they've been unhoused or unstably housed for so long. They know they need a skill set that's different and they are asking for some of those like and the clergy advocate groups that came out of the move the dial teams has uh, stepped up and created a mentorship type program and so we'll be building on to all of that building up those uh, programs and asking for volunteers to come in and help teach financial literacy and cooking classes and uh, how to clean your apartment appropriately and just any kind of basic skills that you think People know that they might not know, and sometimes just people aren't strong in those areas. Sure. They just need a little, little support, and so um, lots, lots of really cool stuff coming along. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a great adventure. And uh, if you have any questions, please call our office, uh, shoot us an email, and uh, we'd be happy to uh, get you on and part of the team. Yeah, because that's what we do at United Way. We connect resources, people, and organizations to help us create a community that's much better than, well, create a community for good. So if you're looking to be part of that, we're totally open to hearing from you. And you can find more information on our website. It's unitedwaylca.org. Give our office a call. It's 442-4360. Um, and just, you know, I think one of the questions that comes up is, why is United Way doing this? This is not something United Way would normally do. Um, and just know a lot of our partners are doing housing projects and they were all busy and we said yes. So we understand that is not something United Way would normally do, but um, somebody needed to say yes. And, and we, but we are not getting into the whole world of mental health. We are not becoming mental health providers. We are still going to be collaborating with our partners as we always do building contracts around a lot of the support services and things. So it will very much be a United Way program. It will look like a United Way program. Um, it just feels a little different right now. So um, we're just in the beginning stages of that. But it's new territory. New, well, that's okay. Yeah. That's Exciting. An, yeah. it, it is an excellent example of what we do though, right? Like, so we are, we bring people together to solve problems and create solutions to problems. And that's what we're doing with this Housing First Capital campaign. We're purchasing the building and then we're connecting the tenants with the resources out there in the community and bringing those resources when available to that pro to the hotel slash permanent supportive housing facility to be named. Um, and then also looking for a way to also then help the tenants get to the different services within the community so that they can achieve stability and success in their own lives. Yep. So, yep. again, if you have any questions, let us know. We are more than happy to answer questions. Give us a call, 442-4360, or email us. Uh, check us out at unitedwaylca.org, and we'll see you again next week. <laughs>